Today I was asked to talk about um, health, ways to understand health on a multidimensional level. There are lots of people who comment about the health issues and how to connect it with spirituality. So it's very important to understand that at, at this point of time, at this day and age, we still have very, very limited human perspective on everything what happens to us, of uh, what we are, who we are, what's the purpose of our life. And we always create some kind of a meaning and idea about our existence. We choose to believe uh, in this idea or later on to disbelieve. So there, there is a lot of misconception, but everything uh, is tied around uh, human uh, limited understanding, uh, which is limited to the physical body. And because it's, it is limited to the physical body, uh, everything we understand is in the context of the physical body. So we cannot understand who we are. So we think that we are the physical body. And we think that health, luck, or something else is always given to us. This is something limited, uh, which is not us, but it, which is outside of us. It's like we would be a rose and we would have uh, aroma as an emanation, but we would not be aware of aroma being an emanation. And we think that if uh, we become aware in glimpses of that, uh, that is given to us. So, uh, all the ignorance, misconception, or whatever people call as uh, evil, uh, comes from uh, simple uh, unawareness about one's own existence uh, as an individual mind consciousness and as, a, as a, this individual mind consciousness uh, in the space of the collective consciousness. So, the true spirituality should not be separate from our existence. And this existence is on multidimensional level. But since we see ourselves in separate elements, all our spirituality becomes also divided and separate. Actually, uh, many people argue about duality and uh, singularity. We don't understand that this day and age is not even about duality, it's about multiplicity. And that's why there is so much confusion. That's why there's so much ignorance, so much misunderstanding in this, uh, in this field. And as long as we have this misunderstanding, we're not able to, to, uh, to perceive ourselves and uh, to kind of guide ourselves uh, towards balanced existence. So all we have so far is a very, very imbalanced and um, self-threatening existence, which is, which is a result of our corrupt self. This corrupt self is on the spiritual level. And so because it's there, uh, there is a problem. So due to a lot of misconception about... Um, our existence and about ourselves, we tend to misinterpret health. We tend to look at everything in a very, very divided manner. So we look at our uh, mind, at our emotions, at our physical body in a very separate manner. And because of that, we are not able to um, really extend our life and live naturally. If we were to live naturally, we would not have unnatural forms of spirituality. We would not have unnatural forms of uh, living, unnatural forms of healing. And we're having all these forms and unnatural forms of spirituality and healing include all our ritualistic forms of spirituality, religious forms of spirituality, uh, worshipping, projecting our own power outwards, which means that um, we always look for answers outwards. And this happens due to the corruption within self and, and this uh, ignorance and multiplicity within ourselves, because we see ourselves as a, as a jigsaw puzzle 
puzzle where we have to collect ourselves together all the time and different elements of our uh, being constantly drag us into different directions so there is no uh, yog or complete uh, integration within or wholesomeness yoga is about coming back to the wholesome perspective and not only perspective intellectually mentally or emotionally but it's a wholesome perception of self it's 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 a deep absorbed way at the same time uh blissful equanimous perspective on self and also perception in the body so it's very very important to understand that the natural spirituality does not require anything the natural form of healing is always there if you know the source of this true spirituality and the source of this true healing which is within so uh, true health starts with consciousness karma or karmic impressions karmic blockages or all this nonsense that new age people ignorant people talk about comes from distorted consciousness because karma is not something that you're removing on anywhere it's with it's the consciousness itself that manifests the vessel and this vessel is sick imbalanced um, fluctuating because these waves these low vibrations are there in the subtle being of the limited mind consciousness and on the level of the collective and so when we talk about spiritual awakening we first of all <clears throat> have to awake to this point where we realize that nothing is outside nothing is outside of us even if we receive certain guidance even if we are connected externally to some source of teaching learning it's still within ourselves so health is not something which you get from the outside it's something that you emanate from within and if we don't realize that we will go into all kinds of uh, misleading paths because we will always look for some kind of external solution without realizing that the fountain of youth and health is within ourselves now when it comes to uh, these current situation with um, viral outbreaks and all out, all kinds of epidemics first of all there is virus on the level of conscious being and this virus is on the level of collective the virus of ignorance the virus of inequality and division and these kind of viruses they manifest in the form of uh negative clouds or which 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 are manifest in lives of certain people and again according to siddha teaching according to all types of siddha teachings which include taoism kashmir shivism vajrayana buddhism, buddhism these are remnants of siddha teachings let's say and um but in all of these teachings uh the immunity is perceived as a radiation so we are continuously bombarded or we're surrounded by all kinds of bacteria all kinds of viruses but as long as our, our personal shield is uh, radiant or strong nothing comes in so it's not that nothing comes in nothing can stay nothing has that environment in which it can thrive now what is the environment and what is this immunity shield the immunity shield is um, our conscious emanation the emanation of our consciousness if this consciousness is engrossed in all kinds of problems uh, dramas it's a weak consciousness so the shield is weak the immunity is weak and this is the majority of people and if you think that your spiritual evolved being your shield has to be very strong why strong because your 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 inner space your space of consciousness is empty it doesn't entertain thoughts or emotions it lives beyond it and that's why it's so powerful and radiant 
Now, the more you drain yourself, the more your consciousness clings to things, attaches to things, thinks about things, projects into future, goes back into the path and roams in those past emotions and thoughts, the more this kind of consciousness drains its own self and depletes its body of energy. So the body actually is the fruit of consciousness. So according to the Siddha teaching, the body is the fruit. The consciousness is the root. So when you're looking for spiritual roots in the body, you are delusional because the spiritual root is consciousness. So this consciousness, when once it's connected to the collective field, which is enveloped in all kinds of collective thoughts and emotions, when it goes beyond it, it perceives its natural being, equanimous being. And that kind of consciousness starts gradually refining and kind of coming out of that gravitational low pool of the collective and of the individual. So if we want to heal, we have to understand this principle that the root is our consciousness and free our space from all the unnecessary emotions and thoughts. How to do it is actually to learn to be and to go away and away from the action driven spirituality because that is not spirituality. That is another form of hobby or ambition which pushes us to unnatural forms of self-expression or unnatural forms of stressing our nervous system, exciting our nervous system. So from, from uh, uh, being at work stressed and excited, you, you run being stressed about uh, what kind of superfoods you have to eat or what kind of diet you have to follow. You don't need to follow anything unnatural or today you, you fill your body up with um, sweets and uh, chocolate and tomorrow you're trying to keep a pure lifestyle by having nothing uh, or by fasting and um, exhausting your body otherwise. So these forms of sort of spirituality or uh, refinement are false and they're not leading anywhere. If you do kind of stretching yogas where you are trying to um, persuade yourself that you're doing good to yourself, well, exercises anyway is good, but the best exercise is walk. Just go for a walk and go for long walks. Uh, breathe deeply. Uh, keep your posture straight and you'll be just fine. So um, people who live long, who, um, who are healthy mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically never exercise. They don't go to gyms. They don't uh, exhaust, uh, um, exhaust their body with uh, uh, various exercises. They don't uh, do any kind of forms of fasting. That is the realm of ignorant beings who haven't come uh, back to their natural being. Once you come back to your natural being, you perceive yourself as a space which is free. And because of that, you see how everything else which is manifested, which is um, empowered by the collective, is of transitory nature, of depleting nature, of draining nature. And so you no longer relate to it or you gradually come out of that um, connection or interaction with these uh, systems, objects, concepts, beliefs, and so on. So um, health uh, has to be cultivated by cultivating inner stillness. Uh, cultivating inner stillness uh, without really being awakened to the natural being and perceiving that natural being within one's physical vehicle as well, is almost impossible. So you have to uh, be mature enough to come to terms with yourself and to come to the possibility to even hear this knowledge in order to drive yourself away from this uh, bogus, uh, action-driven, ambition-driven spirituality, spirituality of self-empowerment, spirituality of uh, uh, narcissism where uh, you, your motive is based on your feeling of being incomplete, not wholesome. Because true spirituality arises from the perception of whole, whole, wholesomeness within ourselves. 
if you go into spirituality having all the wrong motives, you're driving yourself into wrong direction, just exhausting yourself more, creating more restlessness, or feeding your uh, unrefined, limited self, or kind of, I would say, propelling your internal uh, victimization more, feeding it and uh, promoting your inner narcissism. So if you look for all kinds of recognitions on this path, if you're looking for becoming something, being something, that's not the, the path. And you will not find the path unless you let go of all these false thoughts of becoming something, getting somewhere, being someone, receiving acknowledgement, recognition, and so on. So this path is absolutely pure. It's so pure that it's so hard to notice. And uh, this video is to raise the awareness about how to come back to the natural being, natural being, natural living, and thus natural process of self-refinement that does not require spiritual action, but it requires constant awareness and letting go within the self. This letting go means letting go of conscious connections with objects, with concepts, with ideas, with people. And it doesn't mean that you physically have to abandon anything. It means that you do not copulate with any um, principles or objects within your consciousness. And this on the level of mental and emotional and intellectual uh, dimension. So uh, first of all, the disconnection happens on a subtle level. When you no longer give importance to certain objects or people or principles or beliefs within yourself. And so consciousness, like an octopus, withdraws, takes its legs inward. It withdraws from these points within your existence. Once it withdraws, these points of existence stop being important for you and thus stop draining you. It takes time to understand these connections, to perceive them, to contemplate them, to admit them sometimes, and to let them go. And the more you cultivate stillness and absorption, the more you understand the permanent and the impermanent. Whatever is within your scope of consciousness at the moment is impermanent and transitory. But some aspects receive more importance in your consciousness than others, and that's why they preoccupy you. The moment you withdraw from them into your own self, you perceive your own being, your own, what is the being? The subtle being, the consciousness itself perceives itself. Even though it's still in the body, it perceives itself. And once you perceive your natural being, you're able to understand what's not natural, what's, what's imposed what's imposed by systems, what's imposed by other people, by the collective. And you start this process of refinement. True healing is this gradual refinement. When you understand that karma is not imposed, there's no judge sitting there to impose anything on you. It is self-created, it is self-imposed, but it has taken time to degrade self to this degree that one is totally ignorant in a, in a very dispersed way. So the point of yoga, why yoga is born, is to collect oneself into this point of wholesomeness and natural living. And once it's there, everything else becomes clear. The reality actually manifests itself, but it doesn't manifest itself in the way human beings would understand at this point of time from the senses point of view. It manifests itself as the pure perception, pure um, being, you may say. And um, when one cultivates this pure being, which is in the physical body, man manifested as pure absorption, uh, absolute stillness, which is not tarnished by constant thought and uh, emotion forms. Such existence does not drain us and we cultivate our own 
uh, you may say, shield or our own emanation, which becomes our strong spiritual immunity, which also protects our body because the body exists within the consciousness. And so such emanation makes sure that no bacteria, no viruses can thrive or enter or um, find their way into the body because the body is protected by this inner emanation. Now the body itself has to be also integrated with the consciousness and it's not that it has to be, it will be naturally because as long as consciousness letting go and the consciousness is uh, purging everything, uh, disconnecting, um, realizing the um, uh, certain falsehood or certain um, distortions within self, certain unimportant connections that it established within itself, it starts preserving and, and growing its own radiation or energy or the vibration and level uh, uh, evolves or rises. And so the purity of the conscious vibration will make sure that the, the body also becomes pure because there is a direct connection. And so if let's say you uh, were having bad habits or you were not very much uh, eating naturally, you will start having desire to change your diet, to change you, the way you approach food in general. Because sometimes people are, they, they seem to be spiritually evolved or they try to portray themselves as spiritually evolved and intellectually quite uh, capable. But unfortunately, they can't tame their tongue and their body or their appetite. And so the intake of the food becomes a problem because they're still obsessed. They still can't balance. They can't find the way to balance themselves. Now, the most important is to understand that people who live long uh, have the condition of their organs, the condition of their uh, blood vessels and um, all the systems like glands is pure, not calcified. Many people uh, online talk about um, pineal gland calcification and I receive all kinds of questions about it. So we have to understand that there is overall calcification of the body, it's not only pineal gland. And how it happens, it happens through blockage in the vessels, blood vessels. And if you want to know if the person is really healthy, you have to look at their um, blood vessels, capillaries, veins, how they uh, function and uh, what's on the walls. As much as you look at the uh, gut, at the um, condition of the intestines, because the pollution of the intestines and the pollution of the veins create abnormal uh, flow of the blood and so the energy in the body. Now, in order to be healthy, we need to make sure that nothing rots on the walls of our intestines. So intestines have to be pure so that assimilation of food happens better. Now, if our liver is healthy, we'll be able to digest anything. Now, liver is a very important organ because liver helps us rejuvenate. And so if liver and gallbladder function properly, and they function properly when we eat natural foods, uh, not over spiced foods or overcooked foods or over fried or too oily, too sugary, too salty. Many people think that diabetes comes from the malfunction of uh, pancreas, but pancreas and liver work together. The whole digestive system works together, so you cannot just separate as the current science separates them. If you want to promote the 
health of your pancreas promote the health of the liver. That's why bitter herbs and uh, uh, other plant-based uh, foods are recommended, greens and so on. So the most important is to understand if the blood vessels are clogged, all the organs like liver and other will also malfunction. There will be gallstones, there will be uh, kidney stones, and uh, there will be uh, so-called cholesterol clogs in the veins. Now, how to decalcify your body is to continuously, to continuously feed uh, yourself uh, with slightly acidic, naturally acidic uh, substances. For example, cranberry juice, uh, lingonberry juice, uh, lime water, lemon water. So why they say that it promotes immunity? is because it helps to destroy calcification formations, calcium formations in the body. The amount of protein we have to eat is not more than one gram per kilogram of the body. So if you're 40 kilos or 50 kilos, you need to eat only 40 grams or 50 grams of protein per day. Now look at the amount of proteins people normally consume, and they believe that protein will strengthen their body. It only expands them and uh, calcifies them more. Later on, they start suffering uh, issues with their joints and uh, overall immobility of the body. Their backbone becomes calcified and inflexible. Now, look at uh, the amount of um, calcium that we need per day is not more than uh, 200 to 300 milligrams, which is one third of a gram about per day. Now, if you eat 100 grams of cheese or 300 grams of cheese, you have um, five times or 10 times more the normal dosage of calcium per day required for the healthy body. So it creates a lot of calcification. Now, why certain foods are considered healthy and prolonging our life is because they decalcify uh, calcium formations or all kinds of clogging formations in the blood vessels. So they are the sour uh, liquid of uh, yogurt, for example, natural yogurt. Or, uh, but I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, I would recommend lime, lemon water, cranberry juice, anything which is bitter and sour uh, destro destroys these formations and makes the body lighter. So when the body is light, it's more flexible and uh, we don't need uh, any kind of products uh, uh, to support our living, we, 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 which for example, contain a lot of calcium because our teeth are uh, healthy or unhealthy, not because of calcium, but because of the amount of sugar consumption and the amount of food assimilation in the intestines and the way our liver functions. So uh, when we have a lot of uh, food that causes calcification of the body and the blood vessels, like dairy products, like all animal proteins and fats and stuff like that. And when we have them uh, in big amounts, uh, we just hurt our body and with time it just stops functioning and starts creating issues for us. Now, uh, what comes to amount of foods, we don't need more food than just a handful of food and the rest should be the gas and the water. Now, look at the amount of uh, food that people eat. They haven't yet digested the previous food, they already crave for a new food. It's because of the foods that they take contain or are of a high glycemic index. So they, they constantly have this craving for more and more. And fried oil, oily, uh, spicy foods, um, which are cooked, contain high glycemic index, and that's why they, um, create malfunction of liver and uh, pancreas and uh, eventually stagnate our uh, digestive system. And uh, all kinds of problems originate from the digestive tract.
attract and create issues in our uh, body. Now, if your uh, digestive system or intestines are not functioning properly or polluted, there, is, there are toxins or armor in uh, Ayurveda or Siddham terms. Then uh, if these are there, uh, you start, your, your gut flora changes. And because it changes, uh, you start, because there are pathogens there, or pathog pathogenic flora is there, you start being more, your, sh your immunity system is going down. That's why you start being more irritable, more anxious, more restless, more craving, uh, or depressed, uh, apathic, and so on. So it affects the mind. And it affects the mind uh, because, first of all, the mind has already made wrong decisions when it comes to food or lifestyle. And so it's like a vicious circle, like a down spiral. One leads to the other. And so the mind cannot be then uh, healed easily because the body with which it's connected is draining its energy, trying to detox. But instead of letting it detox, we fill it more with more food that is rottening there. So um, because our shield goes down, our immunity goes down means, and that's why, because we already have the pathogens in the intestines and in the body circulating toxins in the systems of the body, it is easier for new pathogens to enter and affect the body. And so our immunity is not so much physical. We think it is, but um, it is defined by the way we perceive reality, but also our perception of reality is affected by, by, by the systems the way the systems function, our guts, first of all, and the way the circulation of the blood and so the energy happens in the body. So it's like wholesome system. You cannot say that I'm healing my body, but I'm not healing my mind. That's why there are no quick fixes or quick solutions. It's a process of understanding how the root affects the fruit and how also uh, the fruit, if the fruit is not properly taken care of, uh, by the through the decisions of the mind that how the fruit starts rotting and of course attracting more and more um, you know uh, pathogens or uh, becoming weaker and weaker so let's say if the apple has been eaten uh, by by um, worm so more worms can come or more flies can come and eat more so if you create a, an energetic opening on a certain level as well through negative emotions if your space of mind also becomes polluted or you have victimization and victimization comes from these ideas that you see the world not as an emanation of the self, but as something separate from self and against yourself. From this corruption of in understanding of reality comes all the issues come, all the uh, victimization and further issues within the self come. So this is an opening uh, into the system where the, uh, one aspect within ourselves one aspect through which we feel victimized through which we antagonize with with the world creates an opening for further uh, negative uh, entrances so our thoughts and, and emotions are certain forms energetic forms you must call them entities emotional entities and so on so they exist within us so when we interact with other people, they have their own forms. And so we relate to this form. So if there are certain hooks within ourselves or certain openings within our consciousness, within our subtle being, these openings or forms of corrupt corruption, corrupt understanding, they become openings. Openings to more negativity from outside. And so there's no negativity otherwise from outside of us but because on the physical level we appear as different species so every every human being carries their own uh, 
field with, with themselves. And so within that field, there are different forms, thought forms, emotional forms, entities. Entities, they are of a thought and emotional nature. And so if within ourselves we have openings and hooks, we relate to them. And that's why everything is right, because no one is just punished in this world. No one is affected or attacked just because of nothing. Because everything has a certain connection there. And this connection comes from within again. So when you look even at this occult sciences, they all are relevant because people relate to them, they empower them and they connect. They have certain greed, certain jealousy, certain misconceptions, certain um, feeling of being weak or in need of something, desire to control, desire to control the natural flow of existence. So this desire to control leads them to all kinds of um, negative paths or the paths to self-destruction. And that's why when we want to control, when we want to, you know, uh, do something, even when it concerns spirituality, we only end up going towards destructive, self-destructive paths where our desire to control, desire to know, desire to become, desire to have something and understanding everything through a very limited human concept leads us to, or misleads us, better to say, to self-destruction. That's why true spiritual path is very difficult, narrow, you must say. Narrow because it is not for a limited human perception of reality. That's why to get even to know this path is very rare. Let alone walk this path. Of, again, walk means it's, it's a met metaphor. It's basically being. It's being natural. A natural meaning that you're not trying to control the flow of life. You're not trying to grasp it. You're not trying to acquire anything on it. Because you understand that even though this uh, manifested reality is multidimensional, it, can, it, can, it has all kinds of benefits and all kinds of traps and all kinds of things, it's still transitory. Even though it's multidimensional, even if you had all the powers in the world and you could manifest this and manifest that, it has absolutely no meaning for high spiritual evolution perspective of evolution and that's why as long as you dwell in this human limited context where you need to acquire you need to control you need to get rid of something you need to uh, demonstrate anything and be right you will not be able to ever come to the to know even the true path of the true natural spirituality, it will not resonate there. But only those people who can see through it or they mature to the degree that they can see through and at least realize their aspects which drag them around or distort distortions within. So these people have a chance to at least um, come to hear about this, come to know and maybe feel, perceives their natural being. But natural being doesn't mean anything, it's not any achievement. It's just the platform, the basis, the basic foundation uh, without which there is no true spiritual evolution. So at the moment our spirituality is solution driven. We're only looking for solutions because we're sick. And sickness is not our natural being. Aging, dying is not our natural being, but we cannot imagine life otherwise because we're so much engrossed in our self-created illusion, all the systems that we created and this control that we're trying to constantly, constantly maintain. So as long as we perceive everything through that, we're not able to realize that spirituality can be anything but solution-driven or devotion-driven or uh, some kind of a prayer driven and that's where this knowledge is just uh, like um, like another 
breathe. It just comes and goes. It doesn't stay. It cannot be grasped by the majority. It's like a breeze. It's nice, but it comes and goes because it's not the reality of the majority of the people. The majority of the people cannot be. They cannot understand the natural being. And so awakening means coming back to the natural being, not doing anything, not trying to get certificates or acknowledgements or a following. It is about being and cultivating. This is the first step. It's a baby step before anything can be unfolded. And then, as I said before, that true knowledge is self-protected. It will not unfold in uh, impure vessels. Impure means those which are engrossed in this emotional and thought patterns and systems and so on. So before you get to any spiritual level, your foundation, your soil should be pure. If your soil is barren, no seed of knowledge will sprout out. And in order to make it pure, one has to let go of all the ambition to know, all the ambition to be anything. One needs to, to naturally unfold selflessness within self and flow with the selflessness, realizing that life is so natural. It's like a flow that is bringing up certain things and letting them out of it. Meaning it brings in something and it takes it from there. And so is the flow. We, we cannot control the flow. We cannot grasp it. So if you want to be healthy, you have to learn to flow. The most dangerous in this period of time is collective fear. So our system dwells on cultivation of collective fear. You remember um, 2012 or 2015, People try to create this collective fear, anxiety, and many people cash out and benefit on it. So the same thing is happening at the moment. It's a collective fear. Have you witnessed anything? But in the media, you read all kinds of scary things. So we should maintain our own shield by the purity of our mind and not give in to the fear. The more we give in to the fear, we support this collective madness. So it's an individual choice. Now, when you see again that, oh, I'm unhealthy, but I want to progress spiritually, there is no way to progress spiritually as long as the body troubles you. And you have to understand within yourself what troubles you. Certain distortions, certain inclinations, certain misinterpretation of life, that you continue empowering within yourself. And then when you look for the outside solutions, there are no outside solutions, as long as you are not facing yourself. So on that, I want to finish this video. And this is something to think about, not to think actually, to contemplate, because you shouldn't think about anything. You should just perceive the natural being. And from that natural being, you can understand what is false, what is unreal, what is imposed, what is overblown. And that's how wise people know what is what and who is who. Many blessings and stay well and healthy, clear and wise.